Watch it, everyone. Another week's gone by. Most of you probably know by now. I'm Dave Wood, and this obviously is Semiosis 101. And you are watching a very special omnibus edition on general piercing semiotic theory for illustrators and designers. By this point in time, you probably don't need the, the me telling you, but I am Dave Wood. I am Scout Scott, a design educator and researcher, and a published design author. And I've worked commercially as both a freelance illustrator and graphic designer. And of course, this Scout Scott Semiosis 101. YouTube channel focuses on explaining the semiotic theory of Charles Sanders Peirce in a more designer-centric way to visual communication designers, illustrators, graphic designers. On this Scout Scott Semiosis 101 YouTube channel, I post weekly at least one 10-minute explainer video on an aspect of Peirce's pragmatic semiotic theory. The aim of these three videos is to take Peirce's quite complex philosophical theoretical language and using designer-centric terms, put it in the context of designing visual communication whether these are illustrations, motion, brand and packaging, editorial, etc. In this omnibus, we have three episodes back to back, focusing in on within semiosis, how sign action works within visual communication. In the first video, when is a sign a sign? Will then be followed by two views in the same sort of theme of sign action in action. Illustrating semiosis followed by designing semiosis. So if you prefer to watch the videos individually, you can on this Scout Scott Semiosis 101 channel, or you can stay tuned and watch them all in order in this omnibus. We begin this omnibus with the when is a sign a sign video. What I mean by that is the fundamental starting point of semiotics. What is an actual semiotic sign? Well, in Persian terms, a semiotic sign is not a sign until it is perceived as a sign. So we will explore that conundrum in this first video. In doing so, we begin our journey into how a concept is represented through iconic, indexical and symbolic levels. In just 10 minutes, I'll have you rethinking what you think you know those terms mean. After all, we are in the context of pragmatic semiotic theory. Then we'll see how semiosis's power was in plain sight all the time in our sketchbook scribblings without us knowing. Together, within Pierce's semiotic sign action, we will reimagine your ideation design processes. So stay tuned, subscribe, and let's get to the first video. Welcome to this week's talk. This week we're going to focus in on a sort of like fundamental, obvious element that can get lost in the theory. And this is one that I have to keep reminding my students when they struggle with the theory and focusing on the fundamental aspect of when is a sign a sign. Okay, so we're talking about obviously semiotic signs here. And let's just go back to Peirce as our starting point, who says, nothing is a sign unless it is interpreted as a sign. And over weeks, we'll keep revisiting this fundamental point that a piece of visual communication, or what we hope is visual communication, an image, a piece of design, doesn't begin to work semiotically until our target audience interprets it as something more than just an image okay hold that thought because that's where we're going to explore from now on so let's just remind ourselves of semiosis sign action Pierce calls it semiosis that's his word for sign action and the determination flow of how sign action works from a piercing point of view is we start off with the concept to be communicated, Peirce calls it the object, graphic design, illustration, visual communication design. We're using designer-centric terms here, and we're going to call it the concept to be communicated. Concept comes from the, the brief, the client, the needs of the brief. So the concept is where we start it. And as designers, as illustrators, we look for visual language to communicate that concept in some way so how that is represented is our second part of the sign action 
But how we represent something of the concept that needs to be communicated is not enough. Now, semiology, the signified and the signifier, the signifier and the signified, those two elements, two elements working together, only takes us so far. And this is where Pierce is really useful for designers from very early stages of designing because it doesn't just stop with the two, the dyadic. It just doesn't stop with the two of the signifier and the signified. It goes from the concept we need to communicate, how is that represented to our target audience? How will it be interpreted so that the target audience can make the connection to the concept? So by bringing the target audience into the semiotics of how we represent the concept, it enriches our ability to enhance the visual communication to our target audience. And that's where we're going to springboard into today's talk further. Because we're going to focus in on the audience and how the actual concept we need to communicate is interpreted by that target audience. How we do that? Well, we're focusing on just the first part, the concept. And in piercing semiosis, what we have here is essentially Pierce works on triadic elements, elements of threes working together. And those three elements working together at different subclasses of low, middle and high functionality. These are the things that power piercing semiotics that we as visual communication designers, graphic designers, illustrators can really hone our skills on. Okay, so we're only focusing on one of those three triadic elements, and that's the one for concept. How do we represent the concept? Well, Pierce calls it the icon, the index, and the symbol. But what we will do is we will approach it from the adjective because there are t issues with the terms. The word iconic has different connotations, different um, understandings what iconic means and different uses of it. And as I said in previous videos and future videos, when we use the word iconic and symbolic, we're doing it purely within the framework of Persian theory. So I just want you to bracket your, your thinking just to this within semiosis. Never mind any other meaning of the word iconic. It means something particular in semiosis. And that's what we're focusing on. And it helps us, well, it helps the target audience interpret the concept. And that's where I'm getting to with this. So let's explore these things. What do, what do we mean by these things? Well, Iconic is the lowest subclass of how to represent the concept within semiosis, within semiotics. The Iconic, think of it as the building blocks the fundamental build and blocks from which great design and great illustration can be built upon. You don't build a cathedral straight away. You build a one brick at a time, one block at a time. And that's essentially the metaphor we're going to use for iconic. And what does iconic mean in the context of semiosis? Well, think about resemblances, qualities and resemblances and perception because it's a very qualitative way of recognizing that certain shapes, certain lines, certain colors, certain textures have meaning, intrinsic meaning that is contextual to one, how they're placed together in a design and two, our own experiences that we can bring to that to recognize then when we see this color and that line and that texture in this way it resembles something we already know it resembles qualities that we already have that putting them together in the context we're seeing them suggests to us it could be a possibility of being a ah. okay so it's that level of quite qualitative non-defined initial interpretations of that reminds me of or oh, that's a bit like oh that looks a bit like 
that's where iconic starts to work and if that starts to work then we are starting semiosis the process of sign action because all of a sudden something that was just a line now has some meaning that we're looking for it takes on an iconic level of representation that we're looking for because it could suggest something else so all of a sudden when is the sign a sign it's when we start adding meaning to something that is at an iconic level oh that's oh that reminds me of this or oh, that reminds me of that moving up a level indexical the middle subclass of how to represent the concept is when we pick out the concept by means of pointing. If you think about your index finger, we use that to point at things, things that are there in front of us, things that we can see, and things that we know that we try and communicate to other people, go, oh, it's there, 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 there. Similar approach to understanding what indexical representation is within Persian semiotic theory. We are talking about how to craft our visual language to point to existing things. So those existing things could be real things in the real world that we can pick up and we can move and we can share, we can hand over to somebody else and we know it's there. But it could also be ideas. It could be ideas from literature. It could be ideas from philosophy. It could be all kinds of different things. So an idea is also an existent thing. Think about memes. It's an existent thing that exists. It may not be tangible, but it exists. So in Dexical, we move up our representation. And as soon as people start seeing the, the things that we are crafting in our visual communication, they go, ah, that is bang. So moving from that reminds me of, or that's a possibility that that could become that is ah that is it's pointing at an existent thing from our experience as the target audience that we already know that you as the designer has crafted for us to start that process of moving up to enhancing the visual communication to work at an indexical level moving one level up to symbolic this is where the concept is understood and interpreted as a convention or a rule so at this level the highest level of semiotic representation within sign action within semiosis the symbolic level of communication is a general level because it transcends any individuality of meaning and the whole of the target audience agrees that when they see these things together it means that. So it's no longer just about, oh, that is that as a, an existing thing. But all these things come together to actually suggest, ah, this means that now. What do I mean by that? Well, think about any piece of branding, any logo. When we see the iconic shapes within a logo, that we go, okay, that now means Coca-Cola. That now means, when we see these things together, Shell. That now means cost of coffee, whatever. Whatever the brand is, when we see these things together at a symbolic level, the conventional rule is when we see them like that, it means this. Now, of course, if you've never heard of any of those organizations, then the branding won't make any difference whatsoever. It will only exist at a iconic level. So when is a sign a sign? Essentially, it's when the audience makes the interpretation based upon their experience that has been crafted, hopefully craftily, by the visual communication designer, the illustrator, the graphic designer, to be successfully interpreted. And the fundamental building blocks of getting that process of interpretation kick-started towards what we need the target audience to, go, to gain from the piece of visual communication that we are designing is for the semiosis, the semiotic signs we include in our design work to actually communicate the concept that we want the audience to take from that. If the audience don't engage in that interpretation successfully, they will just see the image, the, the, the pretty pictures that we produce and walk away from it.
but if they get engaged, and that might be for a fraction longer than 30 seconds, it may be for a lifetime, but once they engage in interpreting what does this mean, not just reading it, but actually taking in the whole tone, the whole attitude, the language, the, the use of typography, the use of imagery to reinforce the concept, think you know about the reinforcing of the concept, all starts with the very fundamental building blocks, which is the iconic builder blocks. As soon as the iconic building blocks are interpreted as a possibility, this could mean that, that's when semiosis sign action is kickstarted. Over the coming weeks, we'll go into more depth about what does that mean and how can we enhance that, use that to enhance our visual communication. So come back and watch more of these videos over the coming weeks. We now see that designing semiotic visual communication is a natural part of our existing design process. As Paul Yanni in his book, The Tacit Dimension clarifies for us visual communication designers is that we know what and know how to solve the design problems. But creators refer to this knowledge as tacit knowledge as knowledge we cannot tell. With your blossoming understanding of semiosis, you can now build up theoretical bricks of knowledge and begin to explain first to yourself how you build successful and effective visual communication for your intended audience. In Pierce's semiosis, it's sign action power between what the concept is how it's represented, which facilitates an interpretation, sets its foundation levels in iconic, indexical and symbolic representation. Now these building blocks are integral in all aspects of how we design or illustrate, which leads our intended audience's interpretation connotatively to the intended concept and message. In this second video illustrating semiosis sign action in action we will focus on exploring the application of how to represent a concept by crafting the iconic indexical and symbolic levels of representation i will use my own airmail illustration from the late 1990s to illustrate how pierce semiosis is applied into effective visual communication it will be another theory packed 10 minutes of Pierce's semiosis in designer centric terms. So stay tuned, subscribe, hit the bell, and let's get on to the second. Okay, welcome to this week's talk, and we're going to be focusing on explaining some of the fundamental starting points of semiosis, of the sign action, of how to represent the concept semiotically by exploring the three subclasses on how in semiosis we can represent the concept from the lowest building block, which is iconic, up to the middle ground, which is indexical, and then finally to the highest level, which is symbolic. So these terms are particular to Pierce's semiosis, but of course the word iconic and symbolic has other connotations in a wider sphere of things. So just bear with us on this. And when I talk about iconic and symbolic, it is within the realms of Persian semiotic theory that I'm using the specific meanings of these words. I'm using the adjectives rather than Pierce's words, which is icon, index, and symbol. I'm using iconic, indexical, and symbolic representation of the concept and the concept is the word we use as visual communication designers and illustrators for what Pierce uses the term of object so where Pierce uses the term object we're using the more designer centric term concept but we're using Pierce's terms icon index and symbolic as iconic indexical and symbolic but within a really quite tight meaning of these words and those meanings will be brand new to a lot of people watching this video so just keep that in mind bracket all that 
there as a way of understanding the next 10 15 minutes in this talk and let's go okay so what we're going to do is going to focus in on illustrating semiosis by using a example from sketch to finish concept that builds upon the three levels of representation so this is a more detailed focus on a talk a 10 minute talk I gave at a illustration conference that video of that conference is also available on this YouTube channel so watch the full video and that gives you a complete overview of the the Persian semiotic theory in context of how it's applicable into illustration but I'll just focus in here on the three levels of representation the iconic indexical and symbolic representation using this airmail illustration that I did in the late 90s for Wirral uh, Metropolitan Border Council, NBC. Okay, so we see here a sketch of a carrier pigeon and we're going to be focusing on iconic representation. What is iconic representation within Persian semiotic theory? Well, it is when we have elements that are a resemblance to something we already know that have shared qualities that by association we have a perception that when we see these things we've got an idea that we know what these things mean but in the new context of where we're seeing them then it hints at there's something else happening here and that hinting is essentially the start point of semiosis the start point of the sign action the sign action in action of semiotics working with our target audience. So here we see our illustration of a carrier pigeon and that carrier pigeon is essentially uh, made up of lots of little iconic uh, sketched elements that give a different flavour to a representation of a carrier pigeon that only certain audiences will pick up on. Now, obviously, it's aimed at a predominantly English-speaking local area just the other side of the water of Liverpool on the Wirral, the Wirral Peninsula. So it features a lot of elements that that target audience would pick up on as references. And those picking up of these little elements within this illustration are key iconic representation elements so let's forward this bit further okay so the first thing we're going to look at here is the choice of the pigeon wearing a flying helmet so we see here the little lines and shapes that are put together in such a way to hint at this is a flying helmet if you know what a flying helmet is and a pair of goggles on a pigeon well let's worry about that later but right now we get a sense of flight being represented here so by the resemblance of a flying helmet and goggles on a flying bird we're getting a sense of a pilot rather than a bird iconically it's a resembling elements that we associate with a pilot and so we have this here moving forward that the actual flight of the uh, the airmail carrier pigeon frozen in mid uh, flutter of its wings suggests the wings of a plane but reinforcing here with other elements of iconicness the color is more akin with leather the brown is more akin with leather rather than an airline uh, skin on the wing and the the fluffy bit the lighter color is representational on an iconic level of fair around a flying jacket and the little roundel if you know your world war ii history of the raf then you make the connection flying jacket roundel raf pilot it gives you that little bit of a sense of oh okay this is a bit tongue-in-cheek Let's move it along there. And the little iconic feathers sticking out, almost like fingers, are obviously representational of either fingers 
or Feathers Off The Wing. You can read it in both ways, but it's just iconic level of building blocks of shapes that are sort of feathers and sort of fingers at the same time. You can interpret them either way you want. And then we got like the, 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 the bag itself. So it's not just any old bird, it's a bird carrying male. The male is iconically represented as these little like sheets of sort of like parchment colour with a little square of red on it to iconically represent stamps. But it's just a shape on a shape with colour reinforcing the aspect that this is not just a shape, this is representation of something that resembles the qualities of male that we are familiar with and having that in what looks like a bag that looks like it could be made out of leather all of these are being communicated at an iconic level and putting them all together you're shaping the focus on what this could be and just to give a sense that this bird is in the sky rather than just on a flat plane of whiteness then the the clouds themselves are represented in a sort of cartoony way of an iconic representation of what a cloud if drawn in this way could represent a cloud we've got an idea the clouds are fluffy and so this is an iconic representation of the fluffiness of clouds well ultimately it's just a white shape with a stroke of light blue around it against a gradient of blue on the background in the final illustration so let's look at the final illustration from the sketch. And we can see all these elements come together that is essentially reinforcing the idea of the carrier pigeon, almost like an RAF pilot from World War II with his flying goggles, very tongue in cheek. The fact that we got like the little cartoony shapes, which are again iconic, that it is representing the actual sense of flight and this is a carrier pigeon on a mission to deliver particular uh, mail, particular communication. So let's move this up to one level. So we talked about this as iconic. Now let's move this up to indexical. That if from all what I've just said there, which is essentially a lot of iconic elements all placed together in such a way that we get this sense of interpretation that I've just gone through. Then you get it arise at the point of, ah, okay, this is a carrier pigeon. So we could say that from an indexical point of view, that indexically, when it starts to work indexically within semiosis, sign action, the indexical, think about your, your, your finger, your index finger pointing at things, when the visuals point at a particular thing that we go, ah, okay, that is something that exists. That's something we know that is an existent thing that we know. We may never have seen one in the flesh, but we know that is something that exists. So in this case, indexical representation, like your index finger points at existent things. Now, when I say about things existing, don't have to be real things. They could be things from literature, from any other source that within our culture exists. And in this case, this cartoony air pigeon, carrier pigeon, exists as a concept that we know that carrier pigeons existed and they were used in the war to ferry communications from one location to another so it's reinforcing all these ideas indexically so from this illustration if you got the idea of a carrier pigeon that is the image and all the iconic elements working together to indexically point to a carrier pigeon but if you also got from that the sense of a pilot a world war ii flying ace type pilot in his leather a flying jacket and his uh, flying helmet and goggles then also indexically it's pointing you to that it's the same image but it's starting to work all those iconic levels are starting to work and point you to 
these two indexical elements that is representing a carrier pigeon. It's also representing a pilot, a particular type of military pilot, RAF military pilot. But if any of you of a certain generation also remember the Hanna-Barbera cartoon of uh, Catch the Pigeon, I think it was called, then you'll get the other connections to this. Is the fact that Dick Dastardly and Mutley always trying to catch the carrier pigeon with all their flying machines. It is a lean towards that as popular culture. So as I said, it was aimed at the target audience of the community within the Wirral Metropolitan Borough Council, catchment area of people who the, the, the council wanted to help the local people improve their communication with the council. And so this is one illustration that is just reinforced in the documents that they put through the door to all of their, uh, their people who live within the council metropolitan area. It's just reinforcing this idea of communication between two entities, themselves and the Metropolitan Borough. So that takes us up to the next level, really, which is symbolic. So if this illustration is referring to communication, an aspect of communication, then, as I said, it was aimed at how to contact the Wirral Metropolitan Borough Council. And it was in a brochure comprising of lots of different illustrations, all reinforced on the idea of different modes of communication, of how to contact the council. And that is essentially when you see the illustrations and you get the idea that when you see this in the context of the Wirral uh, documentation, this image, this illustration is pointing the target audience at contacting the Wirral Metropolitan Borough Council and you know to actually help with the bins or whatever it is so at this level it's gone beyond the fact that it's a carrier pigeon it's gone beyond the fact that it could be a pilot and references to dick dastardly and mutley trying to capture the carrier pigeon into this is reinforcing a form of communication to the world which is the big concept that this is about so then it becomes a convention or a rule that is agreed between the target audience that when they see these this illustration and these illustrations that were in the in the, the brochure all of this reinforces the idea that it's all about communication so there we have it we have indexical sorry we have iconic which if interpreted in such a way by the target audience that they make the connections it could become indexical representation and once all of that is taken on board by the target audience, they then generally agree that when they see all of these illustrations, that illustration, the carrier pigeon, and all these other illustrations showing different forms of communication, then this means about contacting Wirral, Wirral Metropolitan Borough Council on the Wirral opposite Liverpool. Okay, so that's today's lecture on uh, semiosis. In this case, illustrating semiosis, the sign action in action. Come back next week where we'll focus again the same things about iconic, indexical and symbolic, but we'll focus it through the medium of graphic design and branding just to reinforce the idea. So come back again next week and catch that one, which just reinforces what we said today about using the illustration as the mode. So that is our 10 minutes of Percy and Semiosis 101, focusing on Percy's three levels of representation of a concept, iconic, indexical, and symbolic. At the simple semiotic level, we have iconic representation, a resemblance to things that are familiar to our audience in order to make the connection to the intended concept able to be interpreted. When we get to the indexical level of semiotic representation, the choice in how we represent the concept points to an existing thing or idea. With this visual representation, it says there, like an index finger pointing at the concept. Now the highest level of semiotic representation of the concept is symbolic. A social cultural agreement that when we see the visual X, it means the concept Y. 
Now we examined this using the East illustration as an example of how during our ideation phases, iconic indexical and symbolic representation of the concept or concepts can be connotatively constructed. But in this final omnibus video, designing semiosis sign action in action, in around 10 minutes, we will focus on how in semiosis, the representation of the concept is effectively works when graphic designing. We would deconstruct a piece of graphic design to read it from a Persian semiosis perspective. I'll begin the semiotic deconstruction at the iconic level of representation, then reconstruct the graphic design moving from iconic to indexical, and then from indexical to symbolic. Thanks again to Jack Renwick from the London-based Jack Renwick Studio for permission to feature the Carpenter's Wolf Brandon in this example. So, stay tuned, subscribe, hit that bell button, and let's watch the final video. Welcome to this week's tour. We're going to be focusing this week on designing semiosis, which follows on from last week's talk, which was illustrating semiosis. Last week, we used an illustration example to explore iconic, indexical, and symbolic representation, semiotic representation of a concept. But this week, we're going to focus more on graphic design. Okay, so two aspects of visual communication design we're going to focus in. And we're going to be exploring sign action in action. Now, of course, sign action, from Pierce's point of view, as the, the theorist behind the semiotic theory, the word semiosis is actually his word for sign action, the action of the semiotic sign. And that's what we're going to focus in on. Just the very first one, which is concept. And we're going to focus in on explaining iconic indexical and symbolic using a piece of graphic design as a way of explaining the theory and how the theory can enhance visual communication. To do that, we're going to be using a piece of graphic design, a piece of branding. Um, done by the Jack Renwick Studio. Thanks, Jack, for giving me permission to use this example. And it's from 2016, uh, their branding of Carpenter's Wharf, a housing development on Fish Island in Hackneywick in London. And Carpenter's Wharf was basically redeveloping Fish Island and setting up 35 canal side, one, two, and three bed apartments. But rooting those apartments, the branding of it was rooted in the culture of the island, which was basically woodworking and that type of like activity on the island. Just to give a sort of uh, context for this continuation of the, the island itself on the Thames. So we're looking at continuity here of activity, but obviously moving from actual woodworking and industrial into residential. So that was the big concept behind Carpenter's Wharf as a development. And that's what this branding focuses in on. And we're going to explore that through applying semiosis to this 2016 campaign. Okay, so iconic representation is the entry starting point of how semiotics works from a Persian point of view. What iconic representation does it represents the concept by providing visual clues and we're talking visually here visual clues of what we want our target audience to take from it to interpret from what we provide them with for them to make connections to the big concept so what we have here is the fact that iconic representation picks out the concept by resembling that concept. That iconic representation can only refer to the concept by its perceived resemblance through an association of shared qualities that the target audience are already familiar with. So that's what we're going to explore further as we go through here. So let's just explore, start that exploration now of iconic representation. Well, straight away, what we just saw there on the screen, if you got the word tools in your head, 
then iconically you are already beginning to interpret the semiotics underpinning the design. You don't have to know what type of tool that these things are. It's just the fact that the shape of the things you recognize as tools. So here we are, we have a tool, another tool, another tool, and another tool. And it's the, the shapes of those tools. It's the shapes themselves that gives us the, the sense of what we're looking at is a tool, an object that is a tool. But that's not just all we're looking at here. We also have the fact that the left hand part of the Brandon, we have the shape of a house. Now, fundamentally, as children, when we're told at school, draw a house, draw your house, we come down to this iconic level of what is fundamentally a house shape. But we might have lived in flats, we might have lived in big country houses, we might have lived in two or two down terraced houses. Our actual physical house had no connection to the shape that we drew, except that when we told to draw a house, we know it's got a roof, walls, and a floor. And that's what we draw. We draw something that resembles a concept of what we think a house is. And that stays with us all through life. So a very fundamental starting point of iconicness begins as a child. It begins with us being human. But all of these things, I've drawn shapes here to, to focus on the shapes, but also we have the wood print of the wood grain. And if you look at the imagery again, you see that the shapes themselves are built up of sections of printed wood. So this is wood that's been, as in printmaking, rolled with ink and then paper pressed over the top of it to capture the wood grain. And then that has been used to create the imagery you see. So this itself is also iconic because it's iconic of the wood grain. It resembles the wood grain. It's come from the wood grain, but it resembles wood grain and wood resembles natural materials. So iconically, there's a lot going on in these imagery, in this imagery that is iconic in nature that starts off our wonder and discovery of what does all this mean? What does this mean? Well, let's move up one level. If you got as far as tools, then iconically, these sh like shapes made out of blocks of printed wood, wood grain, gets you to this point. That if you know from the left to the right, that the first object is a wood plane. The second object is a wrench. Third object is a wood saw. And the fourth object is a hammer. If you got to this point of being able to name them, already these imagery is moving up the levels of semiotic communication into what we call indexical. Think about your, your, your index finger. It points to specific existent things. A wood plane, a wrench, a wood saw, a hammer. Because it picks out the concept by means of pointing to an existent thing. So as designers, if we craft our iconic representation in such a way, then some people, some of our target audiences will make the connection, the interpretation we want them to, to say, ah, that is this pointing gallery. That is a wood plate. That is a wrench. That is a wood saw. That is a hammer. All of these things are indexical representation. It's still the same image, but once you start making the interpretation at a higher semiotic level of this is an actual existent thing. And when I say existence, I'm not talking about it has to be a real thing. It could be an idea. Trolls don't exist, but it may be representational of a troll okay that is an existing thing in popular culture and in folklore but it doesn't exist but it still could be referenced indexically through visual means 
that we see the shape of the element, which is the iconicness, to then go, ah, all those shapes put together, that means a troll. But in this case, it's not a troll, it's a hammer. Let's move up to the next level, which is the top level of semiotic communication, which is symbolic, symbolic representation. And it picks out the concept we want to communicate via a convention or a rule. What do we mean by that? Well, we're talking about this piece of graphic design as a piece of branding. It's branding Carpenter's Wharf on Fish Island in Hackney Wick in London. It's actually points on us to not just an existent thing, Carpenter's Wharf, but when we see the branding and all the elements of the branding or the tools or the wood grain, like house shapes and all the other elements that are part of the, the branding campaign, it all points to this physical location, which is 35 Canal Side 1, 2 and 3 bed apartments on the canal, which is called Carpenter's Wharf. So as soon as we start seeing all these images in a particular way that we know the meaning of it is actually ah that's like Carpenter's Oaks Carpenter's Wharf um, development area where the houses are where you've got one two or three bed apartments all of these things means this place that is the convention or the rule that we as the target audience learn so let's just go back a few steps and what we have is, at an iconic level, the resemblances to some things that we already know. Once we get the connection of, ah, that is this, then we're starting to move up to indexically to the final stage where it all works together semiotically to actually, once we know what the real concept is, in this case, it's Carpet's Wharf, a housing development, then that is where the same piece of design works at the higher level. So the same piece of design can work at iconic level if the audience interprets a lot more from it, it can start working at the indexical level and then if the target audience gets the full concept then it works at the symbolic level of representation. So hopefully that gives you an insight on how semiosis works through the representation of the concepts we want to communicate through iconic, indexical and symbolic. But we will be coming back to those terms in more depth over the coming weeks in future videos. But for now, that's the end of today's video. Come back again next week. And that's it for now. That was our last 10 minutes or so of Percy and Semiosis 101 Omnibus for now. Well, you follow me through the semiotic deconstruction and reconstruction. You will have noticed I use terms such as resemblance, qualities, existing conventions and rules in this semiotic deconstruction of Jack Renwick Studios, Carpenter's Wharf, brand identity, in the context of semiosis. This is because theories and practice in semiosis are entwined with qualitative and existential connections. Pierce's semiosis provides us with how the visual language used can be tailored to our intended audiences. Then the qualitative and existential connections to what the audience already know provides illustrators and designers with why our visual communications semiotically work. Pierce's semiosis utilizes the sign action power between what the concept is, how the concept is represented to facilitate a successful interpretation by our audience. The audience's connotative interpretation can be manipulated and guided by effective use of iconic, indexical and symbolic representation in the visual language we use based upon what they already understand. In a Semiosis 101 Omnibus video next month, we will explore how each of these three levels of semiotic communication of the concept's representation can be further understood and manipulated. If you've enjoyed this omnibus, then please like these videos, subscribe to this channel below, and if you want to be notified when the next video is on YouTube, hit the bell button. As a fellow creative and a published design author, I have a link in the description to my Scout Scott website where you can 
Also see the latest weekly Semiosis 101 video, read the Scouse Scott blog, and browse illustrated and typographical GIF ranges on my Redbubble shop. There you can also find my 2014 design book published by Bloomsbury Publishing, Interface Design and Introduction to Visual Communication in UI Design. You see, over the years, I have collaborated with other design academic researchers and Persian semioticians to develop a designer-centric explanation of Persian theoretical language. If you are interested in reading my semiotic Rosetta Stone academic writing, then you can visit my academia.edu link in the description. Any other books on Persian semiotics or design I've mentioned in the videos are also listed in the description. Check them out too. You see, by subscribing to the Scout Scott Semiosis 101 YouTube channel, you will learn how semiosis, Persis pragmatic semiotic theory can help to enhance how you visually communicate. I do have many more Persian semiotic topics to discuss on Semiosis 101, but I'd be interested in hearing about your semiotic thoughts too. Add a comment below. And of course, if you like this video, check out my other weekly semiotic videos too, and consider liking and sharing those videos with others. Thanks for watching this Omnibus. There will be another Omnibus edition next month, and a new weekly 10 minute Semiosis 101 video next week. But check out all the other Scout Scott Semiosis 101 videos, like and share them with your friends. You can also follow Scout Scott on Instagram and Twitter using the at Scout underscore Scott name. But don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified when next week's free Semiosis 101 video is published. So see you all again next week for another 10 minute Semiosis 101 video to help illustrators and designers to enhance your visual communication skills. Thank you.